Welcome to seminar video number four. In this video, we will discuss soil management and water conservation practices in order to catch the water on your landscape through the best practices and protect your soils. One of the major important issues with soil management is protecting that soil from elements and from overuse. This also incorporates providing back to the soil. So creating a closed system where we can provide nutrients back to the soil that we are using. We will discuss this through protection of the elements. We'll cover a few of these in this video and a few of them in our seminar. And then we will talk briefly about water conservation, which also helps from soil erosion. One example of protection of elements is using ground cover. Ground cover is defined as many different plants that can be put down to cover your ground and offer protection to the soil. This picture here is an example of ground cover by using sweet potato plants because their leaves provide shade and protection to the soil from erosion. This sweet potato field is also mulched with straw which gives an extra layer of added moisture for that soil and an extra layer of protection. There are many other examples of ground cover that we will discuss throughout permaculture. You can use different cover crops such as hairy vetch, which is a nitrogen fixing cover crop. Nitrogen fixing cover crops have the ability to provide nitrogen back into the soil. Other examples of this are alfalfa, winter rye, and clover. These nitrogen fixing examples, as well as our sweet potato example, provide us with plants that have multiple functions, or they stack functions. This is one of our permaculture principles. So these plants have more than one reason to provide for us. The nitrogen fixers provide nitrogen to the soil, as well as being cover crop. And the sweet potato is a ground cover as well as providing a food source. Comfrey is another great example of a plant that is multifunctional or can stack functions. It is a plant that can be used for ground cover as well as being considered a dynamic accumulator, which means that its roots bring up valuable minerals and nutrients to the soil, as well as being a living mulch because you can cut down comfrey and use it as a mulch for your trees or your other shrubs nearby. It also outgrows most of the weeds around those trees and shrubs. Thus, it can suppress the weeds as well as being a fertilizer. Throughout the semester, we will delve into learning about various herbaceous perennial plants that have multifunctions, just like comfrey. While plants are a great way to provide that protection for our soil, there's also many different methods that we can put into place other than plant placement, one of which is sheet mulching. Sheet mulching is similar to composting or mulching, where you create several layers of greens and browns and organic material that will break down and turn into soil or compost. Here's an example of a trial run of lasagna gardening or sheet mulching that I've done on our grounds. By providing these several layers of greens and browns that eventually break down into compost, you are adding layers to your soil and continually growing the nutrient content in the soil. While providing an extra layer of protection and not having to degrade the soil by tilling every year and breaking up that soil structure. This is another example of sheet mulching here where the people have done several layers of browns and greens and have put straw on top. This also retains moisture and it provides a weed suppression as well. We will now move into protection of elements from water runoff and discuss a few of our water catchment systems. 
Water catchment can also provide wind breaks and bioremediation. We will discuss all of these water catchment systems throughout our Unit 4. Some of these water catchment systems also provide a large amount of water harvest that can be used to provide for our plants. Some of them are rain barrels using gray water, building rain gardens, and doing various earthworks projects. Some of the earthworks projects include transforming landforms into various different things such as swales or hugel culture beds. This means that you will be building on the contour of the land in order to capture water and store moisture. One of the most important of these earthworks is the hugel culture bed, which stands for wood culture. A hugel culture bed looks just as this picture shows. It is a bed built up on different wood debris, such as tree trunks, branches, and various other shreds of wood. It then has a layer of greens or nitrogen. This helps to balance out the carbon and nitrogen ratio because so much of the woody debris provides so much carbon. These beds act as water protection as well as a spot to grow on. They're continuously breaking down and therefore releasing nitrogen and carbon up to the soil. They are often used as beds to plant trees or heavy shrubbery that needs lots of moisture. They also provide a windbreak, which can protect your plants on the downward slope of that hugelkultur bed. It is a great way to provide moisture and resources to your plants. This is a picture here of my students last year building a hugelkultur bed. We built it at the lowest most point in the plot that I was growing in because that was the point that got the most water and the logs could soak up the water and provide a great spot for trees and a windbreak. We will continue to discuss how water catchment and water conservation on your landscape can help you manage your soils as well as provide a very obtainable yield. Please keep all of these concepts in mind for our seminar and for our field lab. Thank you.